This is Regis Algebra 1, and we have Lesson 2.1 on negative numbers. Now, when we talk about a number line, well, first off, negative numbers are things we experience in the real world, so we need to be able to describe them. For instance, if you um, overdraw your bank account, or if your um, the temperature, we have a zero gauge, but sometimes the temperature, as you know, can drop below zero. So how would I indicate that? I would indicate that by a negative number, negative seven degrees. If I have $50 in my bank account, but then I spend $60, I now have a negative balance in my bank account, negative 10. So we do use negative numbers. There are many other examples. And the easiest way to illustrate negative numbers is on a number line. If this is the zero, and we know that we count here, one, two, three, etc., always in a positive direction, there is also a negative one on the other side that balances out same distance from zero as the positive one. There's a negative two on the other side of the zero, same distance from zero on, on, um, as positive two, and three to negative three, and four to negative four, et cetera, et cetera. So if I have the number 50, positive 50, it would be over 50 places 50 ticks on this side. If I had the number negative 50, it would be over 50 places on this side. So we define that. So I'm showing you what negative numbers are, and I'm also speaking of another concept, and that concept is the idea of absolute value. Absolute value has a symbol with a large kind of vertical lines across the um, on either side of a value or a number. So it means the distance from zero. So it always has to be positive. Distance from zero on the number line. Okay. So a absolute value of three would be three ticks or three segments from zero on the number line. But the absolute value of negative three would be what? it would still be a distance of three from zero. So absolute value is simply always the positive expression of whatever value is inside. Okay? So it's, it will always be positive because it's distance. Now a couple more ideas. So when I'm going to add, from now, uh, since you've been young, you've been adding two positive numbers. You say, okay, if I have 2, I go over to 2 here, and if I want to add 3 more, I would go to the right 3 more places. 1, 2, 3, till I get to 5. So I go over 3 places. Okay. We're going to use the same kind of thinking to add, begin to add negative numbers. Let's say I want to add 4 and a negative 3. 4 plus negative 3. Well, how would I do that? Well, I would start with 4. There's my 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's where I'm starting. And then I'm going to go in this direction to the left, three places. One, two, three, to get to positive one when I'm done. Here again, up above, I uh, started at, at two, and I'm going to go to the right, whoops, to the right, one, two, three places because it's positive. Here I'm going to the left three places because I'm adding a negative number. As you do these exercises, you are going to make some discoveries. 
And even though these will become obvious as you work through the problem set, I'm going to actually tell you what these are right now. And you could wait and do the problems yourself and see if you can deduce them, putting this on pause until you finish your problem set, and that would be just fine. But you know that, let's start with this, if I add a negative and a negative together and sum those, well, I never even showed you that example. Let's say I have a negative 2 plus a negative 4. Well, what would you do? On the number line, you would start at negative 2, and then I would go to the left, because these are the negatives, to the left, or the smaller numbers, four more, one, two, three, four, until I get to negative six, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So any time I add a negative and a negative together, I will always get a negative number. Hopefully that's obvious to you. Why? Because wherever I start on my number line, if it's less than zero to begin with, that would be a negative. Okay, somewhere over here. I'm not going to assign a value to it. And I'm adding another negative. I'm going from here, which is already less than zero, in the negative direction. So my answer has to be negative. But what if I add a positive and a negative? Here would be my zero. Well, I would start somewhere over here on the number line. I'm not labeling it now, just somewhere in the positive side. And then I am going to go to the left because I'm adding a negative. And will my answer be positive or will my answer be negative? Well, hopefully you can see it's going to depend on how far in this direction I go. If I go a number, a value less than, the number, the positive number I start with, less than the first number, then I will end up, like this drawing, I will end up on the positive side of zero. So if it's less than the first number, I will have a positive when I'm done. If it's greater than, let's say I go all the way over to here, notice I'm on the negative side of zero. So if it's greater than the first number, my answer will be negative. Now I'd like you to go to page 45 in your book, and let's talk about 31, 32, and 33 together. 31 says true or false. A. The sum of two negative numbers is always negative. You're thinking in your mind, there's zero, there's my first negative number, then I'm going in the negative direction. The answer is true. That's always true. A negative plus a negative is going to be negative. B, a negative number plus a positive number. Okay, let's, there's my zero. Let's start with a negative number. I need a positive number, so I'm going to go this direction to the right. Is it always negative? No, it, it could be negative or it could be positive, depending on how far I go. Okay, so that would be a false statement. A positive number plus a negative number. So I'm going to start with zero. I'm going to start with a positive number. And I'm going to add a negative number. So I could go there, or I could go there, or I could go there. And it says a positive number plus a negative number. Is that always positive? Well, it would be here, but not here or here. So that is also false. It depends on how large the, uh, a number I am going in the negative direction and whether or not that's larger than this number I start with. Okay. So I think as you start... Uh, Working with these negative numbers, adding negative numbers to de um, for your homework, you will. This will begin to make a lot of sense to you. 
Number 32. Adding a negative number to another number is the same as what operation? To add a negative... Well, there's a couple things I could say. If you're just following what, what you've been instructed with, is this unit to add a negative is to move to the left on the number line. I'm not sure that's the question he's really after, to move to the left on the number line. But I could also say it is the same as to subtract the opposite operation to subtract a positive. But that's going to be talked about more in the next section, so I'm a little confused about him asking that now. To add a negative is the same as to subtract a positive. We will be showing you that more. Finally, 33, testing a few of your definitions. A negative number is less than zero by definition. An integer has to do with positive whole numbers, is defined as positive whole numbers, negative whole numbers, and zero. So three groups for integers. And finally, real number. A real number is anything that can be plotted on the number line. It can include zero, can include positive integers or positive whole numbers. It can include negative whole numbers. It can include fractions, both positive and negative. It can include decimals, both positive and negative. It can also include things like the square root of 5, where there's no simple fractional representation, or pi, for instance, if you've been exposed to those things before. So the, real, the definition of a real number is anything that can be plotted on the number line.